In this movie, I will be showing you our flat roof structure using Subcontractor for coverings. I'll click the letter F here and bring this module in. The Renovations and Alterations program has individual modules to cover the different scenarios that can occur when you are doing flat roof work. So if you are pricing for building the flat roof structure, but bringing a subcontractor in to do the coverings, then this module is designed for estimating exactly that. To get my estimating underway, I need to enter the length of joist area here in the red cell. This is 4.3 linear metres. Next, the width of the joist area. I'll just click on the blue question mark. In the diagram, I can see that the width I enter needs to be from edge to edge and include any gable ladders if they are required. So my joist area has a width of 5 linear metres and I will enter this here in the red cell. The default for my centres is 0.6, but I want mine to be 450mm, so I will enter 0.45 here. If I scroll down the pricing sheet, I can see that many calculations have taken place, and if I entered the subcontractor cost and hours, then my estimate would be practically done. But let's take a look at the details and see what's been allowed. I can also see that there are some yellow cells. I do always like to check these, as they may require my judgement. The first item on my pricing sheet is the wall plate. I can see that 47 by 100 mil graded sawn has been allowed. I will be leaving this as it is, but if you wanted something different, then you can use the drop down menu here, like this, to choose what you would like. I can see the quantity of wall plate here. This calculation is currently based on having a wall plate at each end. The wall plate material cost is here, and the hours that it will take here. The labour cost is based on a carpenter carrying out this work. If for any reason you wanted to adjust this, you can do so by using the drop down menu here. Next I can see the calculations for the joists. Again, this includes the material, which you can alter by using the drop down menu. And the program has calculated that I will need 45 linear metres for my joists. Unlike some other materials, it is crucial that the breakdown of this 45 linear metres is passed on to the builder's merchant. As for example, on this job, if a builder's merchant sent me 11 4.2s to make up the 45 linear metres, they wouldn't be long enough, and I would lose time and therefore money trying to sort it out. So the blue text tells me that I'm going to want 10 joists at 4.5 linear metres long for this job. This is one of the clever ways the module assists, as when it comes to ordering, not only do you have the number of joists, but the length is worked out based on the actual lengths that can be purchased while still ensuring that this length will be long enough to meet the needs of the job. If you have and are using easy order, then this information will be brought through on the material list that you can then send to merchants. So it will say you need 45 linear metres of this timber, and underneath it will say it's made up of 10 joists at 4.5 linear metres long. At the moment, I do not have any joist hangers allowed at one end or at the opposite end. I will be using a joist hanger on one end, so I just tick this box. Instantly, the costs and hours for these items are added to the pricing sheet. The module has also immediately reduced the amount of wall plate. If I then decide to have joist hangers on the opposite end as well, and select this option, as you can see, the wall plate is no longer required and the costs are removed. I will be having joist hangers on one end only, so I'll untick the opposite end and straight away the required wall plate calculations return. As I have my wastage set at 6%, the program has allowed for this and has calculated I will need 11 joist hangers. If you want to alter the type of joist hanger, you can do so by using the drop down menu and selecting the one you want. I will be leaving this as it is. The details for the solid noggings going across the joist are shown next. I can see how many linear metres I'll need, the type of material I'll be using, and the hours and costs for this. I'll just click on the question mark for my restraint straps. The programme is looking at the solid noggings, or the herringbone strutting going through here. This is based on the restraint straps, so the maximum centre this will be spanned over is 2 linear metres. If I reduce this number enough, then it will allow for more rows of solid strutting through the joist. But if I increase it enough, then it will reduce the amount of rows through the joist. I'll just go back to the pricing sheet. I can see here that I have two rows going through, as I have four restraint straps allowed. 
If I go back into the picture and alter the sentence to three linear metres, when I go back to the pricing sheet, it has instantly calculated for this change. I now only need two restraint straps and five linear metres and one row of solid noggins. I just want to show you the gable ladders in more detail, so I'll click on the ladder noggins and enjoys question mark. Here in the diagram, I can see the measurements the gable ladders calculations are based on. So the spacing between the bridging or nogging, and how long the bridging or each nogging is going to be. I will be leaving these as they are, but you can alter any of the measurements directly in the picture to match the requirements of your job. If, for example, you only needed one gable ladder as you were building a flat roof into a corner, you could just put one set of the measurements to zero. If you were putting a flat roof into a C shape, so there would be no overhang, you could put all the measurements to zero and no ladders would be allowed. Even if you had walls all around, you can put the measurements in here to zero and alter your joist length so there is no overhang. This module is so flexible and able to cope with every scenario that you may encounter. My fascia is worked out. It is highlighted in yellow as it may require my judgement. This measurement is right for me, but you can change it if you wish. The details of my fascia adjuster are shown here, followed by the soffit. I'll just click on the question mark. The width of the soffit is set at 0.2 linear metres. I will be leaving this as it is, but you can change this here in the picture if you need to, and the pricing sheet will adjust to match your requirements. The weather drip for along the edges is highlighted in yellow too, as like the fascia, this may require your judgement. I'll leave this as it is, but you can alter it if you wish. This module allows for two layers of insulation, to enable you to price for insulation between the rafters and a further layer on top. You can select different insulation for the different layers. For example, you may want a thicker insulation for between the rafters and a thinner insulation on top. You can adjust the material selections by using the drop-down menu here. Or, if you only want one layer of insulation, simply untick one of the insulation rows like this, and the costs are instantly removed. I will be using two layers, so I will retick this, and the material is correct for the job I am doing, so again, I'll leave this as it is. The costs of materials for my sarking, furring, and cant rail are all shown here. The cant rail is highlighted in yellow, as it may require my judgement. I won't be changing this but you can if you need to. Next, as you can see, I have individual lines for all the fixings I will need for the different items in this work. You will notice that all have a red question mark. Let's take a look at some of them to give you an idea of just how accurate and detailed you can be when using this module. If I click on the fixings for the joist hanger, I can use the diagram to specify how many fixings I will be using per joist hanger. This is right for me, but you can alter it here in the diagram on the pricing sheet or in your master file. I can do very similar adjustments on the fixings for my wall plate, solid bridging, restraint straps and ladder noggins. I'll just click on the fixings for the fascia question mark. I can see that two fixings have been allowed every 0.6 linear metres. Again, like all of the fixings, you can alter this, and you can change the number of fixings and number of linear metres between them. I will leave this as it is, but you could change this here, in the diagram, on the pricing sheet. Or, if you know you always do things a certain way, then I would recommend altering any of the fixing settings in your master copy. That way it will be exactly as you want it every time you price, and there will be no need to go through and check when you are pricing. Next I have the fixings for weather drip, sarking, furrings, and aris stroke cant rail. By clicking the question mark for any of these, you'll be able to see how the fixings are being calculated. If I just click on the aris stroke cant rail, the diagram tells me that there is one fixing per 0.6 linear metres. And you can alter this or any of the fixings calculations if you want. That's the great thing about not just this module, but all of the modules. Easy Price Pro will price down to the last nail, but you always have the final say and total control over the quote produced. I am now at the decoration options for my flat roof. At the moment, it is set for painting and the primer, undercoat and gloss are selected. I'm going to be staining. 
so I will untick the painting options and tick the stained base and top coat. I'll just click on the question mark to show you. You can alter the number of coats in here if you wish. Finally, I need to enter the cost and hours for the subcontractor I'm using for the coverings. The subcontractor will be charging me £900, so I enter this here in the cost column. I also need to allocate hours for this work, even though it's being carried out by subcontractors. This will ensure that this aspect of the job is brought into and allowed for in the work schedule. I will enter 16 hours for this, as it will be two men for a day. My flat roof of a subcontractor for coverings is priced. The totals for the materials, hours and labour and the overall total for the job are shown here along the bottom. If you recall, all of this was calculated by entering just two numbers into the red cells and then entering the subcontractor information here at the bottom. I was then able to quickly and easily adjust the pricing sheet to meet my exact requirements.